Hello everybody, this is John with John Monarchic Fine Art and I want to welcome you to another oil painting video. We're starting out here today with a 9 by 12 stretched cotton canvas and we've got a little bit of French ultramarine and alizarin crimson. We're going to make a maybe a little bit of a moody sky today with this uh, little painting. Right now there's no white, not yet, it'll come really soon. I'm just kind of laying color in and I'm, you can tell I'm doing it pretty thin because you can see the back of the canvas through it and now I'm adding the white and if you notice I'm still not adding a ton of white just a little bit enough to make it opaque and cover up you know the canvas pretty good today I'm using only Griffin Elkid oil paints from Windsor Newton this uh, painting will be dry overnight and um, I'm going between these and some other ones to see you know what I like the best but um, there it's a real good paint it's an artist quality paint um, but it's just not as um, pigment rich as some of the other artist quality paints. And it is very inexpensive. I believe it's um, at Blick online, it's $5.88 or $5.87 uh, for a 37 ml tube. I think Alizarin Crimson is like eight something and Sap Green is like eight something. And that's pretty much it. So it's very inexpensive for um, artist quality light fast paint. And what I love about it is I'm not the most patient of people. And I don't like to have to wait two, three weeks for my paintings to dry before I can um, take them to the art fair and sell them or put them online or whatever the case may be. So I lean towards these a little bit. But the Williamsburg handmade oil paints are absolutely gorgeous. And I think I got maybe two more of the Griffin Elkids that I'm going to do uh, videos on. And then I'm going to start with the Williamsburg a little bit. And then I'm going to, you know, give it about a month, see how I like them both, and go from there. I may use one or the other brand, or I may use a combination. I haven't decided yet. Okay, now, one of the things I wanted to tell you, I'm not using a lot of different colors here. Um, but I'm getting different colors. So, the sky was alizarin crimson, French ultramarine, and a little bit of the um, titanium white to make it opaque, and then put the clouds in. Now, these mountains that I'm highlighting now were the same colors, okay, plus phthalo green, okay? Darkened it up more. They kind of canceled each other out, and I got this, like, blue-gray. So it's a darker value than the sky. And then the highlights that I'm putting on, I'm blending in, and now I'm kind of giving them form. And what I'm doing now, and this is kind of a cool trick I kind of found by accident. You got the highlights down. And then what you do is, because the paint is still wet underneath, okay, the mountain color itself, if you take just a hair, okay, at the edges like you saw, of the highlight color and blend it into the base color of the mountain, you got a perfect shadow color. So you can see the highlight and then make the shadow and kind of give the mountains a 3D look. Okay, now the next thing is that mid-ground there at the base, okay, that is the same mixture as the mountain now, okay, except I added lemon yellow, okay? It's actually Windsor lemon, I believe. So what I'm trying to do is get a lot of color harmony by mixing the colors more than just using straight out of the tube. I rarely ever use straight tube colors. Now, the mixture that I'm doing those little um, foothill trees with, okay, is the same mixture of that ground except a little more yellow and a little less of the alizarin crimson and now this is just a little bit of uh, white and yellow just to make them stand out just a little bit i didn't want them the first color went too much blended into the background and even though they're background i'm not going to put a lot of details but i wanted to have them show up just a little bit better so that's why i was adding uh, a little bit of the white to it white and yellow together Okay, what you're waiting for when you see this um, lull in the action, as it were, I'm cleaning my brush or something like that. I clean my brushes as I go, um, not constantly, but, you know, when needed. If I got a dirty brush I know I'm going to use again, I'll just put that to the side. I only wash the brushes while I'm painting that I know I got to use for fresh color later in the painting. And here I'm using a fan brush, and I'm just putting in a little bit of grass, a little bit of taller like tree trunks for the distance those i'm not going to do much with um, highlighting or anything else you can see them pretty much against the sky but again the same color combinations 
Okay, now the water, again, same as the sky, okay? The difference is twofold. It is a lizard, crimson, and French ultramarine, but it's a lot more of the French ultramarine to give it the bluish shade where the sky was more lizard and crimson. Same mixture, just more of one or the other. And then the water, because there's so much green um, between the mountains and the river, I added um, thalo green in there also. Not yet, but you'll see it. I'm going to put the thalo green in here real soon. And this is another one of my things here. A lot of artists do. Don't be afraid to turn your painting upside down if you want to get at it better. You can turn that bad boy any way you want just to make life easier for you. And then there, I'm putting in my green. You can actually see it darkening up in some areas. And now I'm putting on the white to highlight it. Now what I'm doing here, and this is the part of water, you can do it a lot of different ways, okay? What I like to do is put a very thin coat, as you can see, of white, depending on what my water is. Okay, this is going to be moving water, but not crazy like rapids. So I put in a thin layer of white to kind of give it that sheen. I'm putting in a little bit of French ultramarine in there just to make sure I got a little more bluish. And now I'm tapping in the waves, okay? But as you can see, I'm not making them crazy. It's moving water, but it's not, you know, where you'd be deathly afraid to, you know, go in a raft on it. And everybody does water differently. I don't make water look just like a photograph. Actually, none of my paintings look like photographs. I want my paintings to look like paintings. Some people like them to look like photographs, and they're very good at it. Um, I just never had that desire. I like my paintings to look a little more, a lot more, you know, painting. I want you to see some brush strokes, and I don't want you to be able to, you know, say, well, I could just take a picture of that instead. And the people that do it, I actually have a tremendous amount of respect for because painting that realism or that hyper-realism, that takes an enormous amount of time, an enormous amount of talent, and an enormous amount of know-how. So those people, those men and women that can do that, I definitely take my head off to them. I don't have, probably one of the reasons why I don't want to do it is because I just don't have the patience for it. Like I told you, I don't even like waiting for oil colors to dry, you know, two weeks. And I know those paintings have to take a lot more than two weeks to complete. But now I'm taking, again, that same mountain mixture with a little bit more lizard and crimson to make it a little darker, okay? We're coming to the foreground now, so even though the mountain base color was dark, I wanted to use the same color mixtures but make it darker because it's up closer. Now that's something that you can take with you anywhere you want to go. The mountains and these foreground rocks are identical colors, as far as what I used to mix. The difference is what I used more of, depending on where you are in the painting. Just like the sky and the water were the same base mix, I used more alizarin crimson in the sky, more French ultramarine in the water, and then I added a little bit of thalo green in the water to, you know, kind of reflect a little bit of the green grasses. The mountains are alizarin crimson and French ultramarine and a little bit of thalo green. These are the same, except a little bit more losing crimson to make them darker. So it's amazing what you can do. And you can see how color-wise, it's really aesthetically uh, pleasing. You're not, you know, using crazy amount of different colors. But everything is a mixture of what's already on your canvas. And that really helps to make a uh, painting stand out. Okay, now this is one of the few times where I'm using a straight tube color. But it's not going to end up that way. And that's just a lizard crimson on my brush. I mean, it is a dirty brush with um, yellow on it and a little bit of the blue. But, um, so I didn't clean it, but technically I just used the tube of the lizard. And then I got the white to give the accent with the little flowers there. And then I'm just pulling up some grasses. Now, one of the things that you notice is I put the grass in and I put these little flower bushes and stuff in before I put the highlights of the rocks in. And that's intentional i used to do it the other way around and finish the rocks as i was going and then as you put in all the other stuff it'll mess up your highlights and you have to start over on the highlights <coughs> excuse me so i just learned okay the heck with it okay now here's something else and this is going to be this is what i'm putting in for later okay and these are basically this isn't grass but it's going to be flowers but not yet and the reason i did what i did was look at the 
base color was a lighter green. Then I put in the yellow that I tapped in. And now I've got the Elizabeth and Crimson and French Ultramarine that I pulled up on. And those are going to be the stems of some flowers. Not yet, but they will be. Now I'm going to highlight the rocks because I got everything out of the way that could possibly get in, in the way of them. You've noticed I got an overhand grip on the brush. It's just a little easier to control. And I'm just scrubbing it in. I'm not using a huge amount of paint as far as thick. It just, you know, a little thick, not a tremendous amount. And I'm just, you know, going crazy with the highlights. Now, the other thing you have to look at is, too, is I'm highlighting the left side of each one, which is the same as I did with the mountains. You want to make sure that whatever you're highlighting, that you keep it from the same direction from the sunlight. Because um, you don't want to have the mountains highlighted on the left and the rocks highlighted on the right. It'll kind of throw people off a little bit. Okay, now this is a, one of the... All of painting is fun. But this is one of the parts I really love. I'm just dabbing down, mostly with um, a lizard and crimson, and I'll have a little bit of uh, dioxazine purple. And what I'm doing is just... I don't want to say highlight, because I'm not, but I am guess I'm forming... Okay, molding, let's say. That's a better word. Molding the background foothill trees, okay? there's You can see there's still no detail, but I'm just making the colors stand out a little bit more. I got some olive green, a little dioxazine purple, and a little bit of the uh, lizard crimson, and I'm just making them stand out a little bit. And here's the flowers. I'm using a filbert brush and just moving the brush and using the corner and putting in those cute little flowers. And that's just about it. It was about 24 to 26 minutes, I believe, for this painting um, when I was doing it. And then obviously I sped it up for YouTube's sake. So it's another example of being able to create a beautiful little painting. This is a 9 by 12 stretch canvas and not um, taking, you know, six days to do it. You learn some basics, you do some practice, and you come up with some really nice artwork in a very short amount of time. So I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please consider subscribing to my channel. And if you do subscribe, hit that little bell. I try to upload a minimum of once a week. Sometimes um, I'll do it twice a week. It just depends on how my work schedule goes at my job. I hope everybody has a great rest of your week, and I'll talk to you later.